Hey everybody, it's me, Max, and in this video, I want to show you guys how we can create really nice line graphs using the module matplotlib in Python. So I have my PyCharm open, and I'm going to create a new project. The name that I'm going to give this project is quite simply going to be graphs, and I'm going to make sure that my virtual environment checkmark over here is checked so that we install all the modules into a virtual environment. Then I'm going to press create and my project will open up. The first thing over here is I'm going to make a new Python file and call it graphs again. And once I have this new file open, we need to make sure that we have the right modules installed to draw these graphs. And in this case, we're simply going to be using the module matplotlib. So let's go ahead and get it. And the way to do that is simply to go down to the terminal over here and then write pip install matplotlib. And this is going to install the module, which is going to take just a few moments. And now that you see the module has been installed, uh, we're going to make sure that it is in fact installed by quickly going to pip list. And this command shows you all the modules that you currently have installed. And as you can see over here, the fourth one from the top is the module matplotlib. So we can be sure that we have all the necessary modules installed. And now we can go ahead and draw our very first graph. So from matplotlib, we're going to import the module pyplot or the submodule pyplot to be more precise. And we're going to import it by PLT, which is going to make it a bit shorter to reference the module if we only need to write PLT instead of pyplot. And the data which we're going to be graphing is quite simply going to be the number of views per day that my channel has gotten over the past 10 days. So on the x-axis, I'm going to have days and I'm going to copy in an array, which is going to be the numbers 1 through to 10. And this is quite simply the first day of September, the second day of September 2022, the third, the fourth, up until the 10th, which is today. And in addition to that, we're going to have some values for the y-axis. So we're going to write y underscore views. And I'm going to then go ahead and paste in another array because I'm quite slow at typing. And there you can see the number of views per day over the last 10 days. Now this is already enough data to plot our very first graph. And in order to plot a graph, we first have to reference the module pyplot by writing plt. Then we need to write plot. And in brackets, we have to add the x data. So the data that goes on the x-axis, which is the days and the data that goes on the y-axis, which is the views. And this is already enough to, well, uh, enough data for our first graph. But to show the graph plotted, we have to add one more command, and that is going to be plt.show. And now if I go ahead and right-click on the file and then click on Run Graphs, you can see that the graph has been plotted and uh, we can also make use of the small command bar at the very bottom of this. So let me just briefly go through what you can see over here. Over here, you have a pan button with which you can move the graph within the axis. And if you want to reset the original view, you can click on the small house, which resets the view. If you want to go back and forth with the changes that you made, you can simply use these arrow keys over here. You see that I'm going back and forth. And then there's also this zoom icon over here. So if you want to zoom into a specific place on your graph, you can draw a rectangle around the place there you want to zoom in. And you can see that I'm zooming in. And then we can reset the view by clicking back on the house icon. Then there is another small icon over here called Configure Subplots. If I go ahead and click on this, you can see that this other window opens up. And over here, I can add some padding to the graph. And yeah, overall, I can go ahead and change the layout of this graph so that it suits my needs. 
but we're going to keep it as it is. Um, and so we're going to reset it and close it. And the very final thing that you can do over here is you can actually go ahead and save the graph which you created by clicking on this save icon over here, but we're not going to do that now. All right, so now that we've displayed some uh, initial data, what are the other things that we can do over here? So one other pretty cool thing that we can do is we can style the line which we're plotting. And one way to style the line is to give it some color. So if I write in color and then equals, and then in, um, uh, then I can write the letter B in here, for example, to make it be blue, or I can give it the color red. Let's make it red so that the changes are easily visible. And besides that, I can also change the line style by writing line style equal to dash dash. And that changes the line to a dashed line. And besides the color and the line style, we can also add a marker, which um, is going to show up on every single data point. And we're simply going to choose a dot. So let's see what these changes look like in our graph. So now you can see that we have a red line. And in addition to that, the line has been shown in a dashed line. And finally, you can also see um, that each and every single data point is marked by a small dot. So that's very nice. Um, there's a lot of different styling options, and I'm going to leave a uh, link in the description down below to a page where you can see all the different styling options, um, but it would just be a bit too much to go through all of them. Uh, but there's going to be a very nice link with an overview down in the description below. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, then make sure that you do. And um, if we move on now, another thing that we could try and do is we could try and add another set of data on our graph. So how about I choose the data from my best performing video? So I'm going to write y underscore best. And this array of numbers is going to be showing us the number of views which my best performing video has gotten over the past 10 days. So you can see that on the 1st of September, we are going to expect a value of 366 views on our graph. And if we want to plot this, we of course need to tell PyCharm um, or Python to do so by writing plt.plot. And in parentheses, we're going to then add the x days, because on the x-axis, it's going to be the same as the one in our initial graph. But on the y-axis, we're going to write y underscore best, which is going to give us this array of data being shown on our graph. Now, that is already enough to uh, show the graph, but let's also give it some nice styling. So we're going to give it a color. So we'll be able to distinguish between the graphs when we're going to give it a green color and we're also going to add another line style. In this case, we're going to make it a slash dot, um, a, a line that has slashes and dots. You'll see in a moment what that looks like. And we're going to give it another marker, but this time instead of a dot, we're going to be giving it triangles. And you can do that by typing in a V over here. So let's see what all of this looks like. So you can see over here that we have the two graphs nicely plotted in the diagram. And you can also clearly distinguish between the graphs because the top graph is the total number of views that my channel has gotten, and it's in red. And then the bottom line is the number of views which my best performing video has gotten. And that is displayed in green with these small triangles. So next up, I think it makes sense to give our graph a nice title and some labels on the X and Y axis. So we can add a title by simply writing plt.title. And in parentheses, we're going to give it the title channel views because of course I'm displaying data um, on the views of my channel. 
Then to add an x-axis label, we're going to write plt.x label. And in parentheses, we're going to write, what are we going to write? We're going to write September 2022, because of course on the x-axis, we're displaying the first 10 days of September 2022, which is when the data is from. So it makes sense to have that on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, I'm going to write views. So y label is simply going to be views. So let's see what this looks like now after we've made these small changes. So on the right hand side, you can see the graph. And as you can see over here, we have on the X axis, the September 2022 label. And on the Y axis, we also have a label called views. And at the very top, we have the channel views title. So our graph is getting nicer and nicer, but there are still a couple of improvements that we can make over here. So one of the improvements that I like to make is to add a grid to the graph. That's one thing we're going to do. And another thing that we're going to do is we're going to adjust the axis. Because if you look at the x-axis, I am having a step over here of 2. So if you have the number of days from 0 to 10, I want it to show all the individual numbers and not just in steps of 2. So I want to see the 1 over here, the 3 over here, uh, the 5 over here, and so on. And the third change that we're going to make is we're going to adjust the y-axis to show us all the values starting from 0 and going up until, let's say, 1,500. Okay, so let's start off by creating the grid. To create the grid, we're simply going to write plt.grid and then we're going to write true. After that, the second change we mentioned was that we want to have all the days on the x-axis. So we're going to write plt dot x ticks. And then we're going to simply pass in all the numbers which we want on our x-axis. And that corresponds with the x days array. So we're simply going to pass it in here as an argument. And the third change we mentioned was we want to have on the y-axis all the values going from uh, 0 to 1,500. Or more specifically, we want to limit the graph uh, y-axis to these values. So we're going to write plt.ylim. And in parentheses, we're going to write the range, which is 0 to 1,500. Let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the desired result. And yeah, so you can see that the changes have been made. We now have this very nice grid in gray showing us um, a little bit more exactly where the values lie and making the graph look a little bit better. Then we also have on the x-axis all the individual dates um, in September. So you know beforehand we had the values in steps of two. Now we have all the values. And on the y-axis we have the y-axis limited to the value 0 to 1400. So all of this is looking really awesome now. And of course I can go ahead and play around with this graph by using the small icons on the bottom over here. So if I want to move the graph a little bit, I can go ahead and do that. And if I want to reset the original view, I can click on the house and I can also go ahead and save it. All right, so these are the main things that I wanted to show you, but there are still a couple of small things left. How about we change the style of the graph? So one way to change the style of the graph is to first check out what styles are actually available to us. And you can do that by writing print. And in parentheses, I'm going to simply write plt.style dot available and this prints out all the available styles that our graph can have and in addition I'm quickly going to comment out this final line over here so we don't draw the graph and down here in the console output you can see all the different styles of graph that are available to us 
And we're just going to take the first best one, I guess. Let's take Seaborn. I think this one looks quite nice. And let's see how we can uh, yeah, change our graph to have this style. To add a style, we are going to go at the very top of our file. And then over here, we're going to write plt.style.use. And then in parentheses, we're going to write Seaborn. Then we're going to comment out the print statement and add back in the show statement over here at the very bottom to make it plot the graph. And once we do that, you can see that the styling of our graph has changed. And now it looks a little bit better because we've added this very nice um, Seaborn style to our graph. Now there is one awesome little Easter egg that I want to show you guys, um, which is you can plot these graphs in the XKCD style. So some of you might know that blog. Uh, it's a pretty cool blog where they have this comic style graphs and you can go ahead and uh, actually add this style and you can do that by going to the top of your file and then writing plt.xkcd and then you can execute it again. And now what you'll see is that your graph has this really cool comic type of vibe um, which uh, is this XKCD style from the blog. Uh, so if you're using graphs in a bit of a more um, unprofessional setting or you want to have a little bit of fun with comic graphs, you can go ahead and use that. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope that you learned something. If you did, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and we'll see each other in the next video.